On April 1st, the CTO of Palantir tweeted something very profound. Language is not knowledge. I think that, in the future, companies will be divided into two categories. Companies that understand this statement, and companies that do not. Language is not knowledge. I think it can be expressed as follows. Languages are not mathematically perfect. Here's an example. Tell me how many kilometers it is from Seoul to Busan. 400 kilometers. It may seem like a perfect conversation, but it's mathematically flawed. That's because we haven't defined what it means to go from a point in Seoul to a point in Busan, because the distance changes depending on the reference point. Also, the distance from Seoul to Busan varies depending on whether it's a straight road, highway, or national highway. The straight line distance from Seoul to Busan is 320 kilometers. In that case, this conversation is mathematically flawed, both in terms of the questions and the answers. It's incomplete knowledge. Here's another example. Where are you now? Nearby exit 4 at Gangnam Station. This type of conversation is commonly used among friends in everyday life. However, based solely on the information in this conversation, it's impossible to find the friend, because nearby is a subjective expression, not a mathematical one. To provide accurate information to the friend, you would need to say something like this. I'm currently at longitude 127 and latitude 37, specifically at the exit 4 of Gangnam Station. You'll need to provide your exact coordinates, but we don't actually have these conversations, because if you only have the information of the exit 4 of Gangnam Station, it's possible to find the location by visually searching and directly locating the friend without sufficient location information. But if you think about it the other way around, you realize that visual information is used because language does not provide complete information. If you were in a state where you couldn't see, you would feel that even nearby exit 4 of Gangnam Station is not complete information. Language is not a knowledge, it's just a combination of expressions. With that as a premise, let's talk about the following points. ChatGPT is a language generating artificial intelligence. This AI's language generation method is achieved through a statistical probability approach. For example, if there is a sentence of I blank to school, among the many expressions that follow, since option one is statistically the most common, option one is selected to complete I go to school. That's why sometimes when you ask GPT mathematical questions, it may give nonsensical answers. For example, if you ask about an uncommon formula, like 3 to the power of 73. Because these numbers are rarely used linguistically, because there is no data statistically, GPT generates numbers on its own without following any specific rules. This is because they are good at speaking naturally in sentences, but they don't understand math. But in just a few months, these problems began to be solved. If you ask a math question like this, GPT has been upgraded to a way that reads the output values obtained using external programs rather than making judgments on its own. At first glance, this may not seem like a big deal. Let's go back in time. In order for humans to obtain answers from computers by asking questions, they had to ask in a mathematical language called code. Now, thanks to GPT, people and computers can communicate in human language, which means the intersection of the computer's internal programmatic language. It can be seen as an evolution to a stage where human language and computer's mathematical language are able to communicate with each other. Then, what will happen? Recently, a platform called GPT Plugins was announced. GPT Plugin can be described as programs that GPT artificial intelligence can directly utilize. If you have a shopping app in your plugin list, recommend me some vegan food and buy it for me. When you told GPT like this, it has become possible for GPT to use a shopping app directly to add those foods to a cart after finding them. An employee working at the company is equivalent to creating productivity, and in modern society, most employees create productivity by using computer programs. However, this process is similar to how GPT produces results through its plugins. Therefore, companies would naturally strive to use GPT more frequently. To be more precise, specifically preferring to use Microsoft's artificial intelligence rather than relying on human intelligence. So, is it game over? Will all the companies in the world eventually adopt Microsoft's artificial intelligence instead of human beings? And wouldn't Microsoft ultimately dominate the entire world as a result? In my personal opinion, it doesn't seem so easy to become Microsoft's monopoly in the market. It's for this reason. Humans communicate in a human language that is not perfect. 
they form a group. When they form a group, they create their own implicit language among the members. As a result, communication between groups becomes even more incomplete using imperfect languages. A wall is built between the groups. This is a typical example of a situation where a group of designers and a group of developers do not fully understand each other. A company is like an entity that brings together various groups that use their own languages. In simple terms, it is a form of organized chaos. If ChatGPT were to be utilized in a company, it would perform at its best with various plugin programs in each field, but from the perspective of the entire enterprise, it would be very difficult to integrate with ChatGPT. As mentioned earlier, GPT is simply a language AI, and it performs well when it encounters mathematical language. But companies are made up of organizations that use human language, which is disorganized and chaotic. So then it's possible to ask such a question. Language AI like GPT can already perform perform remarkably well, even with just one plug-in program that uses mathematical language. If there is a company composed of a single mathematical language, and if a corporation becomes an integrated OS program, can you imagine what would happen if such companies were to encounter language AI? If I could give you a real-life example, a perfect example of this can be seen in legacy cars versus Tesla. The biggest difference between the two is the presence of an integrated OS. Legacy cars demonstrate excellent performance in their respective areas thanks to the exponential development of semiconductor and sensors, but due to being made up of different languages, it's impossible to make integrated judgments. They all play separately. However, Tesla can make integrated judgments because it has a unified operating system that oversees the entire car. And when artificial intelligence is added in this state, it starts to create unbelievable things, like cars driving themselves. When the road is narrow, it moves like a living organism, such as folding the side mirrors. This is because one mathematical language is integrating the entire system, and the artificial intelligence intelligence is communicating with that language. In Palantir, this language is called ontology. Palantir's job is to reorganize all of a company's data into a language called an ontology and turn it into a unified OS. So, in order for language-based AI, like GPT, to achieve true synergy with a specific target, that target must be composed primarily of mathematical language. Human language is incomplete. Palantir's CEO, Alex Karp, said that to turn a company into a single mathematical language. I suddenly had this thought. Members of the PayPal Mafia are said to have spent most of their time together discussing rare fantasies. Perhaps it was then that Elon Musk began imagining a self-judging car? Perhaps it was then that Peter Thiel began imagining a self-judging company? To achieve this, a unified OS for cars composed of mathematical language needs to be established first, and an integrated OS that restructures all of the corporation's data into a single mathematical language must be built first. Tesla and Palantir have been doing exactly that for the past decade. It's been three years since Tesla applied artificial intelligence to this integrated OS and began autonomous driving, in which the car makes decisions on its own. Palantir is planning to launch it soon.